Hello YouTube, my name is Paul, I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back to another Spotlight video. What I thought I'd do for the month of December is go through different decades. Um, talk about the Christmas releases that I played back in, say, 88, 98 and 2008. Um, so the game I've chosen in this particular video is Operation Wolf. Which is probably one of my most nostalgic games of all time. And probably the game for me, for that year in particular, that was most hyped up to get. And if you didn't know, Operation Wolf is a conversion of an arcade classic by Taito. The game on the Spectrum was programmed, um, I think it was Andrew Deakin, Ivan Horn might have done the graphics or it could be the other way around, and Jonathan Dunn done the music. The iconic artwork there from Bob Wakelin. And Mr. Operation Wolf, so that's what I read, featured in more than one game. He featured in a couple of other games. One was on the Spectrum amongst various other formats and the other one was on the PC. So if you do know that, leave it in the comments box below. But yeah, I didn't know that. It was quite interesting that he used the same drawing or the same character in three different box arts. Now what I'll do for the spotlight video is talk about other games that came around or came out around the same time. So for example, the classic R-Type, which my best mate had it on a ZX Spectrum back in the day, which was the best 8-bit 8 8 -bit home computer version out there. Absolutely incredible, and in one of these lovely boxes as well. The cracking game that I picked up that year was Afterburner. Again, another really good conversion on the Sinclair Spectrum of, a, of an arcade game which was quite demanding. None of these games are particularly expensive to pick up, especially on the Sinclair Spectrum. Biggest disappointment of 1988, says the ST version mind, Double Dragon. Box art's exactly the same on the Spectrum. But yeah, this was... Quite a, quite a stinker and received some quite bad reviews back in 1988. I quite liked it, to be honest. I actually played it to the bitter end and beat it. Another game I got along with Operation Wolf, had to give to, to the old dear to put away for Crimbo, was Typhoon. I'm not sure if this game was called Ajax or something in the arcade. Another one to leave in the comments box below because I can't remember what the arcade version of this game is actually called. It's not a bad little game, actually. Quite difficult, though. And another arcade conversion, because that, that was kind of all the rage back then, was Thunderblade. Now again, the arcade version of this by Sega was flipping demanding as hell. So how they got that on the Spectrum, the Spectrum version is not bad actually, to play was uh, pretty impressive. So yeah, back to Operation Wolf. Now you've had a bit of a flavour of 1988. Um, so yeah, game always wanted. I first saw in the Sinclair User Magazine, obviously a preview, about two or three months before the actual review. On the front of that particular magazine, you had a cover tape with a demo. So I played the demo for hours on end, and I couldn't believe how smooth the scrolling was and how big the sprites were. It was quite quite faithful to the arcade. Now inside that same magazine, before I forget, I had a giant poster. This is this is my original poster. I think I've still got the original Sinclair user. That I had up on the wall there. We've got a couple of old pinholes in there and I'm quite surprised it's in the condition it's in, to be honest, because it's in one of those boxes that most people have. Good old bits of memorabilia in there from many moons ago. So yeah, that's been sat in a box for years on end. So yeah, so unfortunately in magazines back in the day there was no release date for games. So when a game came out, it, it kind of gave you the general month. But apart from that, not like nowadays where you've got a specific game or a specific date of a game's launch. So we went to a me and my friend went to a trade show, like a I don't know, it's like a say like the retro markets are now, it's like that basically, and it was the Victoria Horticultural Society building or something, it's like an old Victorian kind of warehouse, not sure if it's still there in Victoria, uh, in London, but it was back then obviously, so we went there, went there in 87, I think we went there in 88, I'm not sure if we went there in 89, so we used to, used to do about two different trade fairs a year, so we get the bus up there, I um, can't remember the bloody bus routes from Brixton now, we got 2B, 159 or 3, I can't remember which ones went to Vauxhall stroke Victoria. But anyway, it's a nice cold morning. I went into the old trade fair, specifically looking for Operation Wolf. So like I said, we went in there, we got that. I'm sure I got Typhoon, took it home. Said to Mum, I've got to test these games out. I'll give them back to you later on so you can wrap them up or whatever. So obviously I played the game for bloody hours. I think to the point, actually, Operation Wolf, I nearly completed it. Um, so yeah, the only way I could get my fix then, once my mum had the games, was to go around my old mate Joseph's uh, house. He used to go to school with me. He's pop around his house and play on his Amstrad CPC, and he had Operation Wolf for that, which is absolutely fantastic. So that just made me want my bloody game even more, so that was probably a bad move. But yeah, so I eventually got it, 
Um, but yeah, another thing I thought was quite strange back in the days when you wanted the game, um, you used to phone the shop up to find out when it was coming out. Because, like I said, there was no dates for release. So, you used to phone the shops up to say, When is, I don't know, Robocop coming out? It'd be, Oh, next week. And then next week comes, you phone up before making the journey up West End. When's Robocop coming out? Oh, next week. I we just said that. But it's weird how there was no dates for games. They just came out as and when. And in some cases, they came out at different times at different shops. A bit bizarre, really. A bit of a strange distribution network. That's enough about me rambling on. What I'll do is we'll go and play a bit of Operation Wolf and hopefully complete it with a couple of credits. See, I've still got the skill. So I'll see you in the game. So welcome to Operation Wolf. Um, yeah, it's a really good conversion on the Spectrum, as you're about to see. It's got a cool little introduction sequence taken straight from the arcade, which is quite uncommon on the Spectrum because, well, we didn't really get much in the way of introduction sequences back in the day. So programmed by Andrew Deakin, Deakin, graphics by Ivan Horn, and sound and music by Jonathan Dunn. Probably one of the most nostalgic tunes in gaming history for me. Very short one, mind. Just to find some keys. Go and save some hostages. That's it, there's not much on the actual title screen there except for what you see there. Operation initiated, rescue the hostages. So on the right hand side there, I've got my score. Our magazines, the amount of bullets in the magazines, the grenades, the enemies, so that could be man or men, I should say, helicopters and armoured vehicles, how many hostages I've saved, and the damage bar, which goes right up the left hand side. HUD. So you only get one continue in the game as well. And the game is set over six levels. A typical on rail shooter. We've got enemies in the background, the foreground. Everywhere in between. That was quite a nice little touch back in the day, shooting the, the, the uh, knives and the old uh, grenades as they got chucked at you. There's plenty of innocents roaming around, plenty of birds to shoot down. As you can see, the old energy bar goes up rather quickly. The Spectrum copes really well, to be honest, with the old. Uh, the amount of uh, action going on, on the screen at once. It does slow down, but not very often. Got two more helicopters to deal with, and five men. Ah, oh, come on, nurses, what are you doing? That wasn't a particularly great start. Now, I find with this game, depending on what is dropped down for you to pick up, Will depend how easy or hard this game is. As there's no consistency of what actually you can pick up. So some levels, or sometimes you play the game, you get loads of penicillin bottles, and other times they don't ever come down. Right in the village. Good timing. I'm pretty sure the chickens give you extra energy. I don't really know. I haven't noticed, to be honest, as to what they do. Try and keep as many grenades as you can. If you can help using them, or not to use them, then don't. You should get off the first two levels, usually, without any issues. The third level is down to luck. Well, I think it is anyway. 
depending on what falls from the skies in terms of uh, pickups. Six more soldiers to kill. Not wrong, that's not a bloody soldier, Paul. Ten grand in a pocket. Bloody mercenary. End of stage two. So now in the village. Kill all enemies and take a rest. Two grenades, no magazines. And two bullets. That's crap. Get strange women milling around the um, concentration camp, what it's called. The village, sorry. The concentration camp comes up later. Supplies. Think I'm gonna die. Yep. Not enough penicillin buttons, bottles coming down for me to pick up, so it gets a bit chaotic. My last continue. The perfect scenario would be to use to continue after this level, but there we go. So in theory, you should better make this level now. Because your health does regenerate at the end of it. Oh, come on. Can't beat a well-placed grenade. It's amazing how quickly, really, you clear the screen. Graphics are really well defined on the Spectrum, even though there's not much in the, in the way of colour on the main playing area. Another little tune there taken from the arcade. Sound does its uh, job. It's not a lot of it, but it serves its purpose. I think this level now is my favourite, well, it's probably my second favourite graphical level after the last one. Especially those like Arnold Schwarzenegger type baddies. I think the supply is unlimited bullets. That supply pickup. Which to this day I didn't even know that. I thought it was just extra bullets, but it's not. It's unlimited bullets. There we go. Things you learn when you're out and about. Whoa. Oh, no. Ha! <laughs> All hell's breaking loose. Ah, oh, mate. Slight bit of slow down there. What the hell's that? Floating head. Never seen that before. All my years on Operation Wolf, I've never ever seen it do that. That is hilarious. Looks like we could make the concentration camp. This game's cheating a bit now. I've already killed all the allocated people. 
Excellent. If I get off this level, I'll be amazed. But we'll give it a go. Quarter of a million bucks in my pocket. Almost. So once you complete that level, you get lots of ammunition. Supposedly. There you go. But I've got to rescue the hostages here as well. So I've got to be careful not to shoot them. Like that one there, look. There's no tanks in this one. It's literally just helicopters. I hope I make it. Lucky, how the hell did I not kill him? Ah, I didn't even notice my energy going up that quick to be honest. Bloody hell! Well, let's give it another go. That was the second to last level. Don't know why there's so many bloody symbols in this high school selection. Bloody hell. There we go. One more go. Hopefully luck's on my side. It's a cracking pick up and play game now. You can probably complete it in about 10 minutes, 12 minutes. sure you can play this with a light gun as well. Not like I've never tried it with a light gun before. What are you doing? This is poor. Really poor. That's a bit of a shocker. The chances of me getting out of the jungle alive are slim. <clears throat> Do some penicillin straight away. That'll be good. The enemies on this level seem to come from the top left. Shouldn't have wasted that grenade then, really. Sure, the chicken does. What does the chicken do? Is it 
it just there for the fun of it, or does it actually give you some health? Hmm. Do it. No magazines, great. No harm in having plenty of grenades. You should flip and need them later on. Woman, Not again, ain't ya? Always in a flaming way. Come on, shit! I've got no bloody flipping grenades left. Come on, penicillin. Where are ya? Need you now, bastard thing. Bloody hell, that was close. One tank left to kill. I would have got all my energy replenished. Jesus Christ. Never mind, never mind. Waste of a grenade. Oh, come off it, man. Bloody hell. That wasn't too bad, actually. The village is freed and recovered from damage. Powder magazine. Take ammunition by force. Many vehicles to destroy in this level, or plenty of bods. I got a guy holds his face. I don't think they have time to realise you've been shot in the face. Flip it out, here we go. Ooh. Hearty hell. I survived that one really well. Oh, that was crap, Paul. Could have done really well to do something stupid like that. Yeah, the guys in little caps in the middle throw things at you. Ah.
hopefully we can get off this level. No reason why not. Let's give it a go. Get out of my face. 90 men to kill. 10 helicopters. The worst combination. I flipping hate helicopters. Sorry there, hostage. Oh no, I'm nearly flipping dead again. Come on. Jesus Christ. Well, it looks like I'm not getting to the last level today. I've tried. But it is down to the luck of the draw, unfortunately. Oh, should that bloody good? Normally, if I get off the third level without losing a life, I'm usually okay. What the hell? What's going on? Bloody thing. Right, that's it. Let's conclude. So clearly, I don't possess the skill to beat the game anymore, which is a shame. But I have beaten it recently, but again, it all depends on what drops from the skies. Um, if you get enough grenades or enough penicillin, otherwise, if you don't, it's really hard work. The graphics are really good. It's for a Spectrum. Um, one of the best games, I think, released on a Spectrum in terms of how it looks and how it's presented. The gameplay itself, like I said, can be varied between really hard or quite simple. It's a really good pick up and play title. Um, so the sound is quite sparse, the music is, again, there's not much of it, but what there is of it is really good. And I think it's a really good arcade conversion overall. If you want to buy it, it literally will cost you about two or three quid, including post, because it's very common. I mean, at one point I had about four or five copies of the game kicking around the house, but but yeah, it's a cracking game. I certainly would recommend it. Well, for me personally, it's one of the most nostalgic games for me of all time. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for subscribing. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you guys again real soon. Take care and bye for now.